Hi, my name is Vikrant Narang. I'm your astro buddy at Pi Matrix. At Pi Matrix, our mission is to be your partners in space exploration, and our motto is that sky is not the limit. Congratulations on purchase of the Pegasus 76700 Newtonian Reflector Telescope, which is right here with me. And in this video, I'm going to take you through its, some of its features as well as how to use this telescope. So let's get started. You can see this telescope comes with a tripod mount, which makes it very easy and stable to use. It has a metal tube. It comes with a finder scope and it comes with several accessories. It has three eyepieces. One is the lowest power magnification. Lowest power eyepiece is the H20mm eyepiece. Then we have a 12.5mm eyepiece. Each eyepiece, as you can see, come in their own case. And then we have the highest power eyepiece, which is a 6mm. So this telescope is a Newtonian reflector telescope having an aperture of 76 mm which translates into about 3 inches. So that means that this telescope is just the right, right size to get you started in observing deep sky objects as many of the brightest of the deep sky objects like the celebrated Orion Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, the Pleiade Star Cluster are well within its reach. So now I'm going to show you its different parts. So you can see this particular mount is a alt azimuth mount. You can see there are these knobs right here, as well as on this side. These knobs are the lock nuts, which will control this mount's motion in altitude, which I'll just be explaining. This is also an altitude lock knob. So most of the time when we are using the telescope, we'll be using this particular log to lock the telescope in position while keep, we'll keep them medium tight. So rather, rather than having fully tight or fully loose, we will keep them a little flexible while we use this lock knob. You can see this particular fork and there is a shaft with a particular knob which is used as a slow motion control, which is a very useful feature in using these kind of mounts. You can see there is a finder scope. This finder scope has a bracket on which it is connected to the telescope. And you can see three thumb screws, two on this side, one on this side and this particular part of the telescope is called a uh, focuser. Focuser has a dust cap and again there are two knobs, thumb screws or grub screws, whatever you want to call them, to hold the eyepiece in place when it is connected here. And you can see this particular part is the rack and pinion focuser. So basically this design has a gear system, like two gears and when we rotate this wheel, this barrel comes out. This is the barrel which will hold your eyepiece. Uh, going down to the mount, you can see there is a part where I've kept all the accessories conveniently so that I can easily access them. This is called the eyepiece tray or your accessory tray, whatever you can call them. Now, there is a front dust cap. This dust cap also has a smaller opening called the sub aperture that's useful sometimes. Now you can see this is the side of the telescope which points to the object which you have to view. So the this telescope has a mirror inside. This mirror is uh, aluminized mirror. Now this particular mount as I was mentioning is an alt as mount so you can see I can this up and down motion is called the altitude motion in altitude so the tube can be extended fully all the way to the overhead or the vertical position and completely parallel to the ground so completely 90 degree of motion it is there so that means object can be anywhere in the sky and I can, any height in the sky and I can point it and you can also see that this tube can be rotated entire in the all the directions from vertical to horizontal as well as all the directions north, east, south and west. So here we have this finder scope which will, which is a smaller telescope attached to this. Now there is one thing you have to take care. First things, you have to align it. Anytime you come to the field, so the first thing you should take about five minutes and align this. So let's see. First of all, take a terrestrial object. That means it should be a stationary object, not like any object in the sky which is moving because the object in the sky are moving gradually. We don't want that. So like where I'm sitting, uh, where I'm on the terrace. So there is one particular light which is distinct and there is no other red light and that is stationary and it's easy to see. So I stand directly behind it. Now I have to make sure these locks are slightly 
loose and the lock for the altitude motion which I showed you on that silver shaft is unlocked. Now you can see I can easily move this telescope and I also have to show you one more particular lock which is right there. This is a lock in azimuth. So whenever you are moving your telescope, please make sure that these locks are open. That will prevent any damage. So I have removed the dust cap. Now I'm standing behind that object. First eyepiece I have to choose is the lowest power eyepiece. I have to remove the dust cap, place it very carefully. It's very easy to lose all these small dust caps, but they are very important. So we want to teach you good practices through this video also. So I'm selecting my first eyepiece as the 20 mm eyepiece. It's going to give me a magnification of 35 times, which is the lowest possible. So it's like the easiest to use. So many beginners complain that, um, you know, my telescope, it's not showing me anything. That's because probably you're trying to push the magnification too much in the beginning. And that's not a good idea because you will not be able to find the object. So use it. It's the easiest. And I'm teaching you something, something very simple right now. So I insert this and then, you know, there are these thumb screws, tighten them so the eyepiece is secure. Now this particular model has this bracket where there is a small hole. You have to sight that object from this hole, stand a little further, sight this object through this hole. That's the first step. Now come to the eyepiece. See if you can find that object inside this. Now initially, it's very natural that we have not done any focusing, so that object will be blurred. But the point right now is that I'm not even able to see it. So I will nudge the telescope a little. Okay, as soon as I nudge it, I get that object right inside the eyepiece. So whatever I choose from this particular hole, you know, there is a smaller hole right below this. And I can see that object and I can see it here. Next, I lock the mount here and here. So now the telescope will, will not move because now I have to make an important adjustment. This lens is pointing that direction. There is an eyepiece here. So first thing I notice that this is not focused. So I can rotate this to get that object in focus first of all. But now I'm noticing second thing that there is a plus wire inside it. That plus wire is a cross wire. That cross wire is not exactly on top of the object which I have put for the alignment purpose. So what I'm going to do, I'll take these three grub screws or the thumb screws and adjust them by loosening and tightening and see what combination works to get that object in the center. Okay, I'm getting, yeah, okay. So what I did is, I since I have two hands, so I can uh, operate two screws at the same time. So I can choose any combination and try with different. So one of the combinations I used by making one loose and the other tight, I got that plus right on that object. Now let me confirm that object is still there. That means the telescope didn't move. So it is important while doing this that both of these should be matched. Now, whatever I see here can also be seen here. Okay. And now you have to remember not to touch this throughout your observation. If you touch this, if it moves, you understand the alignment will go bad. Now this telescope is ready to use. One thing I haven't told you. So I told you that this object will not be in focus. So remember many times I find that people like say, use the word pointing with focusing. These are two separate things. Right now I've pointed the object here, but I haven't taught you the focusing. So these two knobs I have to hold and take the extension tube or the draw tube in and out while observing very carefully. You can observe me what I'm doing. So you can see that I am looking through this. Now those objects become blurred. They become clear and they become blurred. So, okay. So, so I know where is the best focus. I leave it there. That part is called focusing. Now this is ready. Now let's point to the moon. So to point to the moon, remember I had locked this telescope. So I will first of all unlock both the axes. Unlocking azimuth axis, unlocking altitude axis. Ready? Now give yourself, my recommendation is give yourself a time so that you 
get engaged with the telescope like let's say i have to point the moon in just 30 seconds that's a good target and this is possible it's not so i will see the moon right there observe it and it's behind the cross wire voila so it is there but it is not centered so okay but i can see still in the field so I can nudge the telescope either up and down so I can hold the telescope from here or here but please don't hold the telescope from this. So now I can see that the moon is perfectly centered. Now I can adjust the focus. There we have. It's that easy. Now this, this eyepiece is giving me magnification of 35x. I want to increase that magnification. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to the next higher eyepiece, which is 12.5 mm, which is going to give me a next level. So the moon, I'll center it back perfectly in center. So now I'm going to remove it and then put this. Okay, beautiful craters at the southern limb of the moon. But there is one more trick I haven't shared with you. See what is happening while I'm observing because it is so magnified that the moon is slightly moving as the earth is turning. So as the earth is turning, right now I can see the moon moving. So I have something here which is, I showed you as the slow motion knob. So I can turn this. So this is lock. First of all, I'll lock this lock nut. Now I'll turn this. So I can see as I turn this, the telescope is slightly moving. So this can move the telescope up or down. So depending on how I rotate, the telescope will either move up or down. So we hope you will keep these things in mind while using the telescope and tell us, tell everyone about our products and, you know, enjoy this uh, view. So uh, my name is Vikrant Narang, uh, your Astro Buddy. Once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Our aim is to provide the highest quality telescopes for people like you in India. Thank you very much for watching.